during this time, um, as you say, as, as you know, we're focusing on the theme of being like Christ and following His example. And uh, there's so much to talk about, uh, but after we gave an introduction and focused on the, the idea of turning to Him and repenting, um, then we start talking about the virtues. And in my opinion, and I think a lot of uh, fathers of the church also agree that one of the most important virtues, aside from love, um, <clears throat> is humility. As uh, one of the Desert Fathers, I can't recall who said, um, if you ask for any virtue, don't forget to ask for humility. Um, and another one said, because they're like two wings, you know, lifting you up to heaven. And if you don't ask for humility, you may lose the virtue after attaining it. So, <clears throat> again, there's a lot of, to talk about, and I thought I would incorporate a little of the example of St. Pope Krindos, uh, since, again, this is uh, a, a great uh, feast for us in, in the church to formally um, recognize him uh, as a saint. <clears throat> so we'll take some examples from his words and his life. So today we're going to talk about two main parts, just what is the humble person, the characteristics of the humble person, and then what are some of the blessings that the humble person receives in their life. Okay, so regarding the humble character, we'll talk about four aspects, self-confidence, self-correction, self-denial, and self-examination. A lot of this might be a little bit of overlap from our repentance talk, but uh, they're still they're similar but not identical. Okay, um, the first one is a little funny because you know we never usually talk about self confidence when it talks about humility, but the reason why I, I'm bringing it up is because we misunderstand what being humble is, and sometimes we correlate confidence with pride and lack of confidence or low self-esteem with humility. And they're, they're two different things. Um, so, as we, as we take the example of the Lord, He had a, a lot of self-confidence, of course, but He had extreme and, and perfect humility as well. So, this word, um, self-confidence, we can take in the Greek, uh, the en enthusiasmos or entheos, which ultimately comes from uh, the word to means to have God within, or to be formed within, uh, <coughs> formed from from within God. Okay, um, and this reminds us of the calling that Saint Peter tells us: "Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts." and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you the reason for the hope that is in you. So he's saying, be ready to respond with self-confidence because you have God in you, you have hope in you, and you have this enthusiasm inside of you. So, <clears throat> uh, again, also St. Saint, uh, Saint Paul says, to them God willed to make known what are the riches. He's talking about... Um, the comparison of the people who had Christ and the people who understood or reflected upon those who, who they could tell had Christ in them. He said, To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. St. Paul talks, uh, not with run-on sentences, but he, he has uh, a, a very big uh, vocabulary and his sentences that have to be broken up and even one sentence like you can spend a whole hour um, dissecting. So basically here he's saying uh, to those people God wants them to be an example for others. What are the riches of the glory of the mystery? Okay, so we have a mystery inside of us and there and it's it's very wealthy and he says <clears throat> What is this mystery? Christ in you, the hope of glory. So the self-confident person realizes that they have Christ in them, that they are in the imitation or living a Christ-like life. And 
the humble person is self-confident because they don't care what other people think of them, but they care of what God thinks of them. Uh, and many successful people were found to have someone who trusted in them and fostered this faith in them so that they could develop this self-confidence. So that's why a lot of times you'll see parents or uh, spiritual guides or the father of confession encouraging and strengthening the person so that they could have confidence in themselves to do such and such a thing. And God does that with us. And this is what the Lord did with His disciples. story when Moses, who was the great leader of the Israelites, led millions of, uh, at least two, about two million people from the great land of Egypt into the wilderness for 40 years and succeeded, right? The people looked up to Moses so much that uh, the devil was going to use this as an opportunity for the people to worship him after he departed. <clears throat> And then here comes this little kid <laughs> for, uh, in terms of age and in terms of maybe not as much respect, uh, Joshua, his disciple. So in the beginning of his ministry, he had to fill the shoes of, of the great saint uh, and, and leader, uh, Moses. <clears throat> so if you read chapter 1, the whole chapter basically is about God as well as most encouraging um, Joshua to be bold and courageous uh, and if you know one of the characters we know how great Moses the prophet was but uh, does anyone know what God said about him in terms of one of his virtues his humility he was one of the most humble people um, so that also shows that we could be bold and courageous and strong and humble at the same time. How old was Joshua, you say, when he went to the Bible? I, I don't know the exact age. So basically, uh, he was 40 years with the people in the desert. And before that, he went to discover the land. I think he was about 30 or 40 years old. Yeah, yeah. But compared to Moses, Moses was 120 at the end. <laughs> so, um, and, and a lot of the elders were over 40 as well. So he was, he was his disciple, he was younger, but he wasn't as much as an elder respected, you know, as, as most, but, but you're right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so, um, some, some other, uh, other times in our life, in our service, sometimes we have a lot of doubt, or in our parenting skills, or in our work, you know, we'll get a lot of objections um, from others. <clears throat> and that might lead to instilling fear in us not to do anything. So we need the courage and the boldness to do something. You know, kind of like, um, I don't usually quote the president, but uh, Franklin Roosevelt, he said, you know, when they were, um, they were criticizing him on his policies um, to end the Great Depression, he said, well, maybe they're not perfect in every way, but by God, we've got to do something. So this is the confidence, like, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing, but I have to do something because, the, you know, the time and, and the circumstances necessitates that, you know, I, have to, I can't just sit around and do nothing and complain and say, maybe we should have done this or we should have done that. Um, but if, if this attitude is present with the repentant mindset, you're going to get on the right track. <laughs> Why? Because, like, let's say you have the idea of repenting. Like, you have the repentant mindset of correcting yourself. But you're too afraid to do anything. So you're like, yeah, I have to do this, but I can't. <laughs> I'm too afraid to do it. Right? Or vice versa. You, you like to do a lot of things. We have to do something. We have to do something. But you're always, you're doing something, and then we know that's not the right way. Do it this way. Like, no, no. Just continue. No, so you have to kind of, you see what I'm saying? You have to have the boldness to move, but you also have to have the wisdom to correct yourself when it's time. That, that makes sense? Yeah. Um, okay. 
The second thing, and that's what I'm talking about in the second point, is to correct yourself. So we have the confidence to move, but we have to have the wisdom to adjust uh, ourselves. And <clears throat> uh, character, the humble, the person with the humble character, uh, it, it's revealed in their actions, not just uh, their words. As we see, uh, King David uh, said, or in uh, regarding him, it says David's heart condemned him after he had numbered the people. So David said to the Lord, I've sinned greatly in what I've done, but now I pray, Lord, take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. So he realized what, so he was bold to do something, and then he realized it was wrong, so he kind of took it back and repented. Okay? Um, a lot of times, you know, people will begin to follow a leader who is bold and strong and courageous and eloquent, even some presidents, <laughs> but then if they realize that the character is not self-correcting or someone who is not necessarily straightforward in their um, intentions, they might not continue to follow that type of person. Um, the same thing with, you know, as, as a parent or as a servant. Like, the first thing that might get someone to listen and to obey might be the bold personality. But after a while, when they realize maybe their lifestyle is not even following up to, to their, um, to even their own standards, then when the time comes, they, they will uh, fail to continue to follow. Uh, and this is why St. Paul warns St. Timothy to keep to yourself and the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing so you will save yourself and those who hear. So he's saying, make sure you correct yourself. Focus on the doctrine, focus on yourself, focus, focus on the holy word of God, and if you're correcting yourself, the people who you, you serve and who follow you will also hear you and follow as well. Okay? Um, also, St. Macarius, the king, uh, I won't go get into the story, but there was one monk who made a sin and was uh, the whole group of the monastery were assembled to judge him. So St. Macarius let them go and then he told him this word, he said, judge yourself, my brother, before they judge you. So this is the idea of uh, the person who is close to God is realizing to correct themselves before others uh, correct them. Uh, Self-denial, this is usually what we talk about humility. We talk about the person who denies himself. Um, and one of the best passages in Philippians says, Let nothing be done through himself with ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. And Pope Kyrgios is one of the best examples of this. I'll, I'll mention a few quotes later on. But um, one of my favorites is uh, a verse or, or uh, a quote that he gave in his first sermon, you know, as patriarch, and he said, let us disappear that God's glory may be manifested in us. So this was his, his mentality of the service, is he wanted to give God the glory, and he wanted to, he always denied himself, not just in his actions, but also in, his, in, in the depth of his mind, in his heart, he felt that he was uh, the lowest among everyone. Uh, as the Bible says, he who humbles himself will be exalted. <coughs> and, and as St. Mary uh, reminds us in, in her uh, sermon that we have in the Gospel according to St. Luke, uh, he has humbled those of low degree. Um, uh, sorry, he has humbled the great and, and he has lifted those or raised those um, of, of low. And she was talking about herself. So if you humble yourself, God will lift you up. But if you refuse to humble yourself, you'll be humbled one way or another. <laughs> and we don't want that to happen to us. Um, okay. Um, and this was just one of the quotes by one of his disciples, uh, of Amina. So maybe he said, uh, Father Amina, before he, he was patriarch, and even after though, he considered everyone better than himself. Um, and what was the perfect example that the Lord gives us in the character is what we'll do on Great Thursday when the Lord comes and washes the feet of his disciples, even though it was the, the proper thing for you know the servants uh, at a when, when you invite people to your house 
the first one of the first things you do is wash their feet, and because you know, the, the sandals and the, there were no there was no asphalt, right? So you're welcoming them into your home not only for their sake but also for the <laughs> sake of you know, the, the home. Um, so you would get your servants to wash it before you do anything. But here the Lord is saying, "I'm going to do this to show you that." You, in order for you to be great leaders and founders of the church, you have to learn to wash the, the feet of the people instead of overburden them with with directions and uh, trying to act you know, as a master. Um, and even His Holiness Pope Shiva said, we must not lose the spirit of discipleship. One of uh, Pope Krivos' relatives said that um, when he lived... <coughs> In St. Mina's uh, church in Old Cairo, before he became a uh, patriarch, um, he lived with other monks and, and novices and people who were preparing for the monastic life. He had the responsibility of assigning them the different work to do. Uh, but he, uh, he kept the lowest services for himself, and he did this in secret, uh, which was you know, washing the restrooms. Uh, and he never distributed to anyone else, um, and he did it without anyone knowing. Uh, even there's stories of other patriarchs uh, in the history of the church who would who were caught in the middle of the night washing the the restrooms um, of of the cells uh, of the monks, you know, in the monastery, um, and or you know, in in the patriarch as well. So this reminds us. Um, that we have to be not only foot washers, <laughs> but toilet washers as well. Um, and why? Well, like, it's it's just an act, but the, the idea is um, this helps us to realize that we're not here, but we're here. Um, and, and these, you have to find a way in your life to, to be a foot washer. Um, and by doing that, that will help you increase in humility and in virtue as well. Um, and the great leaders are, uh, because of their humility, they attract a lot of people. Uh, for example, you know, another president, Harry Truman, um, after World War II, he, uh, he had a secretary of George, uh, state, George Marshall, he, he presented a, a, a big plan uh, to re rebuild Europe after the war. The war. And uh, it was a good plan, and his advisor said, well, call it the Truman Plan. <laughs> said, no, I'm going to call it the Marshall Plan because you know, it was his idea. So even though he had the authority to do this, this shows that the good leaders are the ones who are humble in character, and they don't care about... So he said, it's remarkable how much could be accomplished when you don't mind who receives the credit. Because yeah. the people <laughs> under you... They want credit and they want encouragement and, and they want you know um, to to realize that what they're doing is of value. So even if they if they get credit that's undeserved, it, it might encourage them. So uh, this this mentality will help not only in the workplace but also in our families and in the church as well. Another um, uh, quote from Father John Cranston, an Eastern Orthodox. See, he says. Um, this, so this is the last point. We said self-confidence, self-correction, self-denial, and self-examination, which is related, you know, to to, to the self-correction part, um, but it's slightly different. Self-examination is realizing before correcting. So the order might be a little shifted here, but in order to figure out what we need to change, uh, or in order to change something, we have to figure out what we need to change. So here he writes, watch your heart during all your life, examine it, listen to it, kind of like the Proverbs say, uh, keep your heart with all dil diligence for out of it spring the issue, all the issues of life. Uh, and, and see what prevents its union with the most blessed Lord. So this is our target. It's not just to figure out what's wrong with us, but what is separating us from the imitation of Christ. It says, let this be for you the science of all sciences. And with God's help, you will easily observe what estranges you from God and what draws you towards Him and unites you to Him. It is the evil spirit more than anything that stands between our hearts and God. He estranges God from us by various passions or by the desires of the flesh, by the desires of eyes, and by worldly pride. So, 
like if we consider this the science of all sciences, we will be changed, we will be transformed and transfigured by realizing that I want to be with Christ and what are the things that are separating me from Christ. Don't say, you know, <laughs> your wife or your children <laughs> or your, maybe your job. But um, the, these are not things that are, that, that are separating you from Christ, it's something from within. And that's what the science of all sciences teaches that we have to adjust in order to be closer to the Lord in our life and to prevent the evil from uh, from taking over our hearts. Uh, let's skip this quote. Let's go to part two: um, the the blessings of the human <coughs> life. Um, there's also four, but we'll, we'll be brief as possible. The first one is rest. The humble person is not stressed. Why? Because uh, as the Lord says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So that doesn't mean the humble person doesn't have anything to worry about, doesn't have you know anything to do. They do a lot, but they put their burden on the Lord, and the Lord gives them rest. Um, as uh, again he says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. So God is saying, I'm humble, so learn from me, imitate me, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So the closer I get to the Lord, the more humble I realize I am. God, I'm in God's hands, He's the controller of everything. I do my part, I listen to Him as much as I can and adjust myself, and I depend on Him for the rest. So it gives me rest. Uh, when I depend on Him for the rest, it gives me rest. The second blessing is that we get grace or help from God. As St. Peter says, How, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, or, and even we can say the elders can humble themselves before the younger people. It says, all of you be submissive to one another. So he kind of says, not just the younger. He says, all of you be submissive to one another, the husband to the wife, the wife to the husband, and be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. God does not like the proud person, and He uses many ways to humble that person um, if they refuse to humble themselves, like we said before. Uh, like we say, we fall on, on the rock um, to be broken in pieces, lest the, fall, the rock fall on us and we be ground to powder. Um, <clears throat> so God resists the proud person, but He gives help you know, to the person who is willing to humble themselves. Um, uh, that's why he says, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Uh, that, so God does not exalt immediately when we first choose to humble ourselves, but in the proper time he will exalt. Uh, as long as we cast all our care upon him, for he cares for us. Um, <clears throat> so put all your worries on God, and realize that God is worrying about you, and, and arranging your life, so that will give you rest, and that will also give you grace. <clears throat> um, one of Pope Krilos' favorite saints, uh, Saint Isaac the Syrian, he quoted him a lot. A lot, he said, "If you're humble in your heart, then in your heart God will show you His glory." Here, uh, Saint Isaac is saying, "When you're really humble, you're going to have the transfiguration inside of you. Um, you will experience the glory of God, uh, of the grace of God in your life." when you put God as your first and foremost uh, priority. <clears throat> um, and like I quoted earlier, uh, in his first epistle he wrote, um, let us disappear that God may be manifested in his glory. Um, not that we don't do anything, but you know, uh, even when Pope Krivos, um you know the, the time right before they, they choose uh, the altar ballot with the three. Um, <clears throat> so they had the candidates and they were making interviews and then they were taking pictures of Pope Krilos and then he hid himself with his shawl because he didn't want them to take his... You know, like, who, who's this guy with the shawl? How can, he, how can he be Pope? Like he's afraid even to, you know, <laughs> to, to get his picture taken. Um, but this was his mentality. Let me disappear that God may be manifested in his glory. And even after that they asked him, okay, what are you going to do now that you're Pope? Um, and he said, I'll, I'll let God take care of it. Like he, he had the opportunity to say, okay, we're going to do one, two, three. But he realized, you know, part of our planning and our mission and our service 
is um, having God reveal to us what he wants to do and doing it. And I won't go into this, but you know the story of King Solomon um, and how he prayed for wisdom. But God rewarded him not just because he asked for wisdom, but because he was humble. And it, uh, like so when God said, okay, uh, God appeared to Solomon and he said, what shall I give you? He appeared to him in a vision by night. And so he said, God, first of all, he said, God, you're great. He said, you've sure, shown great mercy to my father, your servant David, uh, because he walked before you in truth and righteousness and brightness of his heart with you. So he's praising his father. Um, and then you have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. So this is the Thanksgiving prayer, right? And then he says, now, O Lord, so this is the Psalm 50, this is the repentance, or the humbleness. He says, now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but I am a little child. I don't know how to go out or come in and your servant is in the midst of your people who you have chosen. So he says, here's all the problems. I'm just a little kid. Um, and even Pope Krillos, um, he, he had this mentality that he was like really low. Um, one of, another one of his posts is, uh, his robe is to his, like when people would come and serve him with a lot of zeal, he would say he's, his robe is to his knees and 10 people are coming to serve him. Not that his, you know, Galilee was really short, but this was a reflection of the person who, who was humble, uh, kind of like the workers in the field. Uh, and because of his humility, God gave grace and wisdom. Uh, the same thing as you know with the story of King Solomon. Okay? Um, so just some last quotes and we'll, and we'll finish. Um, I think I mentioned this one before, but it's a very good one. Uh, Pope Krilos said once, you know, it should be the office uh, that seeks the man and not the man that seeks the office. When he's talking about, you know, being Pope, um, it's not the people who are like, like even if you noticed uh, a few years ago, the people who really wanted to be Pope were like at the bottom of the list and they got kicked off the list from the beginning. And and the ones who were, I mean, Pope Tuadros, we didn't hear about him like, very much until he became Pope. He kind of like, you know, uh, he, he wasn't seeking the office and he snuck in and, you know, and took, uh, or he, God gave him uh, the grace and the blessing. Um, and even the bishop was, you know, joking once saying, you know, all the other candidates, you know, of the three, there were a lot of predictions and visions and miracles of, of saints appearing and saying so and so is going to be the Pope, except for Pope Charles. There, there was none of those predictions. Uh, for, for him, maybe there were predictions, but nothing was publicized saying, you know, Saint so and so appeared to me and told me that Pope Tordus is going to be that. None of that happened. Um, so, uh, also he said, run from the world and the whole world will run after you. And obviously he ran uh, away from the world when he lived a solitary life in the wind windmill or when he lived a mile away. Um, from the monastery, he wanted to live his life with the Lord, and the Lord chose him to be the shepherd of the entire church. <clears throat> um, this last quote is, um, the backstory is, uh, one time one of the Metropolitans, who was like, you know, basically the next rank after the patriarch, um, was giving a sermon in the cathedral, and the Pope allowed him to. Sometimes uh, the Pope wouldn't give the sermon, but he would, you know, uh, give it to one of the Metropolitans or one of the bishops. So he was listening to the Metropolitan give the sermon and um, he was very tough <laughs> on the people and yelling at them. And then after he, he spoke to him very gently, he said, Brother, why are you yelling at and ordering the people as you instruct them? You know, who knows who's better than who? Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, of course, this is the heart of the humble person and he humbly corrected you know, his, his brother, even though he's actually his son, you know, uh, uh, the Metropolitan. Uh, another, the last quote here is uh, by Abuna Rafael uh, Avinina. He said, uh, I often heard him uh, basing himself saying, the boy became a patriarch. Um, of course, this was not necessarily right after, but maybe even until uh, the day of his departure, he had this uh, reminding himself that he, he was just a kid before God and before um, 
the, the glory of all the saints. Um, and, and if he asked some, for something and found many people responding to his request, he would say his robe is to his knees and tent are at his service. Or he's still in grade school and the world is waiting on him or serving him. Um, so, uh, Pope Carlos was a great saint. We, we, we don't have time to talk about how great he was and all the miracles and the tons of books that have been written about all the miracles that he performed um, uh, before and after his departure. Uh, and we know of his, he was a man of great prayer, but sometimes we forget also how humble he was despite like, I mean, if, if I perform one miracle, it would, it would be in my mind, you know, for the rest of my life thinking I'm something. But he had, you know, millions, and he still thought this way, you know, about himself. And that's why God grants this grace to, to people like this, of, of performing miracles, or of um, uh, clairvoyance, or uh, being able to help people with their problems, because, you know, he finds the person who is humble and ready to give the glory to God, uh, and this is someone he can work with. So may the Lord help us to be as humble as we can in our lives, like the Lord did, who took the form of a servant and uh, suffered in the form of a servant in order to glorify his children to be like him and glory be to God now for him.